chairman of Ovation Media Group, Dele Momodu, on Saturday paid a condolence visit to Evelyn Joshua, wife of the late founder of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Joshua's widow has been receiving guests on condolence visits at the church in Ekotu, Lagos, since her husband passed on on June 5th. Mr. Momodu signed the condolence register and paused for a while for a few minutes to observe the clergy's man's photo. Speaking after signing the register, the celebrity publisher recalled four occasions where he encountered Joshua. Momodu said he had known Joshua for over two decades and that some time ago he featured the preacher on the cover of Ovation magazine. He said Joshua ordered and paid in advance for 5,000 copies which were printed in England. After printing, Momodu said the cleric only collected 10 copies and asked him to sell the rest despite paying for them. So guys, a lot of people have a different experiences with the man, you know, and both good and bad, the good, ugly, and the rest. Well, nobody has right to judge anybody. Everybody face your own faith face your own spiritual life with god everybody's going to account for what they have done for what he or she has done if you have done good fine if you have not done definitely at the end of the day it's only god that we judge everybody we can say things we don't know what has happened in the spiritual but with what a lot of people have is are saying you know just like a, a missed reaction some people are you know say this some people say the other one so the man has done his own is gone is gone and you could hear from a daily mom model from that which he has said, you know, said this from his own mouth. It's just unfortunate. Hmm. Someone said, daily, I'm not your fan, but for these singular acts, I'm now your fan. No words of human, no human can explain the phenomenon of love exhibited by Prophet C.B. Joshua. Wow. Papa, I called him Papa. For two decades or more, uh, we had a lot of interactions. I remember some of the interactions now. I remember the first time we featured him on the cover of Operation International magazine. He ordered for 5,000 copies in advance. We printed in England. And when the magazines arrived, I called him. I said, Papa, the magazines are here. He called me, Alaga. I said, Alaga, bring 10 copies. So I thought he wanted to see it first. And then he would order for the rest. He had paid in advance. So when I got here, I gave him the copies. He liked them. Then I said, so when should we bring the remaining copies. They don't like go and sell it and make the money. Imagine someone paying you for 5,000 copies of a magazine and taking just 10 and asking you to go and sell the rest. Then, shortly after, he called me back. He said, Alagba, <laughs> you have caused problems in the house. I said, what happened, sir? He said, my wife said, how can I be the only one on the cover? He said, but I told her you don't like publicity. He said, my dad said, no, ovation is different. I like ovation. And that started our relationship. And for the first time, we had Pastor Joshua back to back. We had to do another cover. The following month, and when he came out, he, he had ordered as usual 5,000 copies. He collected 10 and said, I should go and sell the rest. It was such a man who was so generous, you know. Then, I'll give you two more examples. I had cataract operations in London. My eyes had issues. And after the operations one night, in the dead of the night, I saw a strange number calling me. Normally, I won't pick, but I don't know why. I just picked it, and I had a And I said, sir, I know the only person who calls me a is Papa. And he started smiling. He said, I want to do him. You have problems with your eyes. I said, yes, sir. 
He said, ah, is it now? I said, oh, I'm okay. I've done the surgery and it went well. He said, I would like to pay the bill. I said, the bill has already been paid, sir. He called me three times that night and insisted I must send my account details and he paid. I would never forget that occasion. Then, when I was contesting presidential election in 2011, I was in New York. I was already on a flight going to London, Virgin Atlantic. And I received a call. And who was on the line? Papa. I said, Alaga, where are you? I said, I'm in New York. So where are you going now? I said, I'm going to London. He said, please, when you get back, call me. So when I got back, I called him. And he asked me to call. It was around midnight. It rained drugs and cats that night. But he said I must come. So I came and then he took me up in the apartment where he used to meet with me. He said, Alaga, I love what you are doing. You are not going to win this election, but don't give up because you are going to be very relevant in Nigeria. I said, thank you, sir. Then I told him, I said, I was worried because some people were making crank calls to me, threatening me. That's why the fact that they knew I had no chance of winning. He said, Alaga, stop worrying yourself. You will never die before your appointed time. I took that from him. And from that day, I started living my life. In my and then he was carrying two carrier bags. I won't forget. One of them contained the usual church CDs, and the other was filled with money. He said, for me to let you know that I believe in what you are doing, and if you didn't stop doing it, I have money here for me, for you. And twice, he called me, and he supported me my dream. The final example was two years ago. I had called him that there is an Israeli friend of mine who had, he was coming to Nazareth uh, for the crusade and they wanted to see how they could be a part of it. And he said, oh, he's already given that to some other consultants, but I should ask the lady to call. And thereafter, Papa called me back and said, would you like to come to Nazareth? I said, why not, Papa? It would be uh, a very good opportunity for me to see you, to interact with you, and then witness your crusade. But that was the only crusade I ever witnessed. And I went with him, he bought the ticket, he prayed for everything, and I went with him to Nazareth, and I can tell you that that was a huge experience to see a Nigerian, to see an African, every taxi driver, in Israel, knew about Prophet T.B. Joshua. Here was the man that Nigerians nearly ran out of time. I wrote an open letter to him in 2017 when he said he was going to move away from Nigeria. I said, Papa, no. Don't try, sir. This is your country. We have to fight it out and nobody is going to chase you away from this country. Uh, last week, I, it was uh, Femi Fani Paro Day and Omar Elisho uh, uh, you know, they were trying to reach me. Omo Yele said, I feel ahead. I know you, you are close to Prophet TV I said, yes. Once Nigeria said, I feel ahead, you know, they are going to give you a gas to I said, what happened? I said, he heard that the man has passed on. I said, what? So I started calling, calling. I called Papa's number. It rang out. I sent a message to the WhatsApp. This is Daily Momodi. I didn't know. I was sending a message to him in heaven, you know, and then later I was able to confirm and trust me since then, it's been hell for everybody. Uh, but I pray but I pray that Papa's soul will find peace, will find eternal rest in our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever anybody may say about him, he lived a very good life. He lived a life worthy of emulation. As successful as he was, he was very, very simple, easygoing, and I am sure he would not deliberately hurt a fly. So may God accept his soul, and may God bless all of you who are standing by and standing with him and his family. And may the good Lord protect you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir.